In lecture three, I wanted to just continue our discussion about um, globalization and uh, um, what it looks like. And so the book talks about there's three important uh, things that we need to be considering. First one is integration, then the role of multilateral organizations and, and also regional trade agreements. We're going to get into the multilateral trade uh, organizations and regional trade agreements. We're going to get the, into those um, in more depth in uh, next week in uh, Module 2. So integration, um, as, as trade barriers are lowered um, dramatically to the point where there's, they're very low right now, um, what, what's happened is, um, as the book says, it's exposed the domestic policies of countries as the main obstacles to international trade. So, for example, domestic content laws, um, environmental regulations have been imposed um, with, with an emphasis to, in some cases, to restrict trade. So it's not trade barriers between countries, but it's the internal domestic policies that uh, are the are the newest obstacle to uh, to further uh, increases in international trade. Um, so that's that's that. But then also, it's important to know that, as I as I mentioned the last time, um, for example, a car. Um, uh, you know, it, during its assembly process, it goes back and forth uh, between the U.S. and Canada multiple times. Um, many things uh, are, even if, if it's manufactured in one country, the components are made elsewhere. And so um, domestic uh, uh, laws such as, uh, you know, made in the USA or made in China, um, it's increasingly the case that, uh, that that doesn't really happen that much anymore. And the book talks about there's two levels of integration, and so what it terms shallow integration is the reduction in uh, in tariffs, quotas, and uh, and non-tariff barriers. So that's been happening over time. At a deeper level, um, where the action is now is on negotiations over domestic policies that impact uh, international trade. So, for example, the United States is currently in the, in the throes of negotiating um, uh, the, f the latest farm bill. Many of the provisions of, of that domestic policy have substantial impacts on, on our international trade of, of agricultural products. And as a result, because there's vested interests in domestically, to protect certain agricultural sectors, cotton, for example, dairy, for example, uh, sugar, um, and each of those have a vested interest and significant lobbying power. Um, it's, it's difficult, often more difficult to accomplish that than to lower trade barriers across national borders. Um, so the action is on for both shallow in terms of lowering trade barriers and um, deep integration, uh, focusing on domestic policies. Um, both of those happen um, at the multilateral and regional efforts. So the World Trade Organization, for example, at the multilateral level, it uh, it's having a it, it's trying to have an influence in how domestic policies are being shaped, especially if they adversely affect trade relations between member nations. Multilateral organizations such as the World Trade Organization. So multi multilateral means it's it's widespread um, and it affects um, uh, agreements across broad ranges of, of uh, policies across many countries. Regional um, could just be one country um, negotiating with another country. So they're more regional in nature, limited in scope, and, and uh, have a narrower range of, of uh, issues and goods that are being um, addressed. So, like I said, here's some multi multilateral organizations. We mentioned the World Trade Organization. Um, the precursor of that was, which we mentioned earlier, was uh, the General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade. There's the International Monetary Fund, 
established right after World uh, World War II. The World Bank established right after World War II. General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade, the precursor of the of the World Trade Organization, established right after World War II. The United Nations itself established right after World War II. So, like I mentioned last time, after World War II, there was a concerted effort to increase the amount of uh, trade and in, in economic integration uh, between countries. On a regional level, the United States, for example, is involved in NAFTA with uh, Canada and Mexico, the European Union. Uh, we have they have regional trade agreements with with uh, themselves, and there's several others. Um, the United States recently um, entered in the Course Agreement with Korea, and so those are uh, involving fewer countries on more specific issues and generally regional in nature. So we looked at what is globalization, has it increased over time and why? And then the uh, question right now is, is it a good thing or not? And so one of the things that economists agree on, so economists are famous on uh, for disagreeing on most things, but, but one thing that um, most economists agree on is that um, uh, international trade is beneficial and so there's there's empirical evidence for this which we'll get into in, in chapters three and four economic reasoning and economic modeling uh, demonstrates that, that there are benefits and um, we see evidence um, uh, from countries by itself and you know taken together there's a host of not only just reasoning models and empirical evidence um, individually, but taken as a whole, it's pretty clear that for the most part, countries are much better off with um, international trade than they would be without it. So some of the benefits um, is we have technological innovation occurring across countries and feeding off of each other. Uh, one thing that we'll look at with chapters three and four is the reason for um, international trade is countries specialize in what they have a comparative advantage in, what they can produce relatively less expensively. Um, and so we get production uh, of stuff produced at lower cost. And then we have specialization in terms of uh, production and use of, of uh, our scarce resources. So as we mentioned before, um, for developed and most developing countries, the international the increase in, in globalization has been good. It's been uh, increasing economic growth, increasing GDP, and increasing per capita GDP incomes uh, for people. Um, and the benefits, I would say, it's probably fair to say that um, uh, the benefits have not been uh, uniform. Some countries, especially developed countries, have benefited uh, more so than others. Um, and so, as a result of that, the focus recently over the next over the last uh, uh, fifteen years or so has been um, on let's increase the benefits for developing countries. And so, the latest round of World Trade Organization negotiations, uh, called the Doha Round. Are also called the Doha Development Agenda because the express purpose of this round of, of uh, World Trade Organization negotiations is to increase the benefits for developing countries. And so there's a nice little uh, uh, web page from the WTO, and here's the URL for it here um, in terms of uh, the aims and what's been happening with the World Trade Organization and the Doha Development Round. So that's the end of this lecture. And uh, one more to go for uh, this week, and uh, see you soon.